guys. Nope, I'm working right here. Hey guys, good morning, happy Wednesday. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm gonna start this video a little bit differently. Um, and we'll, we'll get to all the fan five stuff in just a second. But just know that, wait, no, I am looking right here. Come on, Mr. Huber. Um, just know that if you are somebody who is watching these videos, I hope you know um, as a teacher how much I appreciate it. Because the reason I do it is my goal for you guys when you come back to school is to know everything just as well as the kids who are sitting in the classroom. Uh, and really, I want you guys to get that joy of taking your score from a one and getting it to a five. If you are somebody who is sitting here and watching these videos every single day from start to finish, I just know that I appreciate it because guys, I can look at the views. I can look at how long the average view is. People are watching. So just know, I know who you are. If you're watching, thank you so much. And I can tell by your scores. Like I, I know who's watching these videos. I know who's trying to get better. So honestly, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and every video. Uh, means a lot to me. So thank you guys. Uh, getting into our fan five mode. So I'm filming this Tuesday afternoon. I've gotten most of our fan fives in. Seen a lot of people go up. A lot of people go up. Seen the fives go up. Uh, Wednesday is the day where I really expect everybody to be getting threes and fours, if not fives. Uh, so you should have already completed today's Fantastic Five. You are here to see um, how you can potentially get better. And um, if you need to, again, take notes, uh, you know, ask questions. I got the Zoom. You can email me. But I want to make sure that you guys have every single resource that you need in order to be successful because the quiz will be on Friday. So I'm here if you need me. Uh, these videos will get shorter and shorter uh, just because not much explanation is that or not as much explanation is needed as we go through the week and you see it more often. So starting with number one and number one and number two are really going to help you in class this week and next week uh, dealing with what we deal, dealt with yesterday with factors. Uh, and then we're going to be moving into prime and composite numbers and multiples. So you'll have seen it already in Fantastic Five. But we will start with number one. It wants to know which of the following is not a multiple of seven. Again, guys, if you know your multiplication facts, boom, 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 you're cruising through this question because you already know them. If you didn't, you might have to do a little bit of work and list your multiples. So if I wanted to start with my first multiple of seven, I know seven times one is seven. 7 times 2, and I'm just counting by 7s, would give me 14. 7 times 3 is 21. Now, if you look at your answer choices, they're all bigger numbers. So I may have to list a few multiples before I can either find my answer or eliminate answers, which my first one that I can eliminate is right here. I landed directly on 21, which means it is a multiple, so I could get rid of that one. All right, but I got some more, so I got to keep going. 7 times 4 would be my next multiple, which gives me 28. That helps me eliminate an answer choice. Bye-bye. And if I did 7 times 5, I'd get 35. Now, that doesn't help me really eliminate an answer, but it gives me an answer. Because if you look at B, it says 34. I can't do 7 times anything to get 34, meaning it's not a multiple of 7, which is my answer. And you can keep going if you wanted just to double-check and make sure you landed on 42. And you would only have to go one more because 7 times 6 gives me 42. What I really like, and I'm seeing this in class, obviously I can't see y'all's work. I'm loving that. I know there's certain people who know their facts, but they're still listing their multiples. Uh, I call that EOG effort. Like you're, you, you know the answer, but you're still gonna show the work to prove it to yourself or to prove it to me that you can do it. So I, lo I love seeing people do that. So that one would be 34. Uh, that's been really good in both classes so far. Same for number two. And now that we actually had that lesson on factors yesterday, honestly, I expect it to be even better. Uh, number two says, which of the following is not a factor of 36? So if you watched the lesson yesterday, which some of you did not, um, I'm going to solve it the exact same way that I showed you um, and the same way I showed them in class. What I would do for any question with factors, any question, even if I know my multiplication, I am going to list all my factor pairs in order. Now, you could use a calculator on this question. 
Um, so the first one you should always start with is one times 36. And then I'm gonna start going in order. I did one, let me try two. And look, I know two is gonna work because 36 is an even number. If you don't know two times something to get you 36, use the opposite. Do 36, divide it by two, and see if it goes in evenly, which it does 18 times. Two times 18 would give me 36. Then I would try three. Again, if you don't know three times something, use division. Do eight, I'm sorry, do 36 divided by three. It goes in evenly as 12. Now, I was saying in class, once I'm getting here, I know the only numbers that I have to try fall between 3 and 12. Like, don't waste your time with 13, 14, 56. If it doesn't fall between those two factors, you're wasting time. So I would try 4 because that's what comes next. And again, you may not know 4 times something. You can use division. 36 divided by 4 gives me 9. And again, now that I'm at 4 times 9, the only numbers I need to try fall between those. So 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, if you tried 5, you couldn't do 5 times anything to get 36. 36 divided by 5 doesn't work evenly. If I tried 6, I could do that because 36 divided by 6 gives me 6. So, 6 times 6, 36, and I know I'm done here because there is no number between 36, or I'm sorry, no number between 6 and 6. It's the same number. So then, again, if you watch the video, you know I'm going to take those factors. I'm going to put them in order from least to greatest, and I'll make my factor rainbow. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. I like to put the 6 twice because it's on there twice. 9, 12, 18, 36. And the factor rainbow just connects the factor pairs together like that and I kind of covered up my answer choice but it wants to know which of those answer choices is not a factor of 36 the very first answer choice is 8 if you look at our factor rainbow 8 is not on there but I do see a 9 I do see a 4 and I do see a 2 so that one right there would give you 8 as an answer the way I did it that's EOG effort some people could just look at the answer choices and say well I know I could do 2 times 18 I know I could do four times nine. I know I could do nine times four. I can't do eight times anything to get 36, which means it's not a factor. It's not my way or the highway, but just know I recognize the people who go above and beyond with their work. I guarantee you, now I'm filming this ahead of time. Remember that I haven't seen Wednesday's numbers at all. I guarantee you that number three goes down in both classes because here's what's going to happen. Just because you solve a question one way on Monday and one way on Tuesday does not mean you're going to solve it the same way every day. You still have to read the question. So this one says Jace did eight push-ups. Mr. Huber did twice as many push-ups as Jace. How many push-ups did Mr. Huber do? It's a different question than you've had the past couple days. So I'm going to solve it the same way. I got two people, so I'm going to do a T-chart. We got Jace. We got me, take the information out, put it in. Jace did eight push-ups, boom. Mr. Huber did twice as many push-ups as Jace. So look, if I told you to do something twice, I told you two times. And to figure out my total, if I did twice as many as Jace, I'm gonna go two times eight. Now, that answer is 16. I bet money that people are going to take 16 and they're going to add it to Jace's 8 and they're going to put 24 because that's what they've done the past two days. This one's going to show me who read the question. It just wants to know how many I did. My number's right here. That should have been 16. So is that a little bit tricky? Yeah, it is. Is it fair for that to be tricky? Yeah, you've got to read the question. If you're reading that one correctly and you're getting 16, sweet. If you're putting 24, I just know that you're just doing exactly what you did yesterday without reading the question. I'm already, I'm already frustrated about that one. I haven't even seen the numbers yet. I can just see the future. All right. Number four, uh, this one was still a struggle in class because even if you know what a prime number is, if you don't know your multiplication, it's going to make it harder. But um, 
you're talking about prime numbers today in my mini lesson. If you watch the video, hopefully you do. But just remember, prime number has two factors, and it's always going to be one in the number itself. So I'll solve it the same way I did it yesterday. I'm going to list out all these numbers. And I'm going to list those factor pairs underneath. So much easier if you know your facts. For 12, I know I can do 1 times 12. I know I can do 2 times 6. I can do 3 times 4. That right there has more than two factors, meaning it's not prime, it's composite. That one would be eliminated. So I'm able to fly through that because I know my facts. For 13, I can do 1 times 13. But that's it. Two factors, one and itself. That's a prime number but I'll check the other ones anyways. 14, I can do one times 14, but I can also do two times seven. That has more than two factors. It is composite. Last but not least, 15, I can do one times 15. Now you could try two on this one, but 15 is not an even number, so it doesn't work. But you've got to keep trying the numbers till you know you can stop. If you tried three, three would work. I could do three times five to get 15. But I could keep going because the only number that falls between 3 and 5 is 4. That's the last one I got to try. But you couldn't do 4 times anything to get 15. Either way, more than two factors, that is a composite number. My answer would have been 13. If you know your facts, believe it or not, guess what I'm going to say? It makes everything easier. Last but not least, I uh, thought we might be able to Ric Flair this question every single day. We slipped up a little bit yesterday, and I did tell you it's going to be a little bit harder with regrouping. Um, some people are getting the right answer and choosing the wrong choice. Like I look at their notebook paper and they have the right work, but they're choosing the wrong one because they're rushing. You've got to look at it carefully. But if I'm adding these two numbers together, starting in the ones place, 3 plus 2 is 5, 7 plus 7 is 14, 4 stays, 1 goes. In the hundreds place, three plus two gives me five, plus one more gives me six. In the thousands place, seven plus three is ten, so the zero stays, the one goes. And last but not least, four plus one is five, plus one more is six. So if you look at this number, 60,645. All of them show 60,000, but only B shows the correct number there, 60,645. So my Hope would be that we'd have everybody at at least a three. I do understand that that is a little bit real unrealistic. But there is such thing as like a good two and a bad two. Like if you had a four yesterday and you got a two today, I'd consider that a bad two. If you got a one yesterday and you got a two today, that's a good two. So as long as you're going up, that's the goal. But I'm a little worried about question three, if we're going to read it. That's got me a little bit nervous. I expect one and two to be really good as a class. Four and five are going to be a toss-up. They've been kind of – if or I'm sorry, five's been good. Four is going to be a toss-up. I think just with more practice, that one will get better. So, hope you guys are watching. Hope the scores are going up. I'm not getting a whole lot of questions on email or Zoom. Um, I'm here. I'm here if you need me. So, thank you guys for watching. Just go do your mini lesson. Um, I think Fan5 is going to help you with that actually today. Make sure you read the entire to-do list. I know you guys will. Um, and I can't wait to see you soon. Thanks, guys.